What's up everybody? Welcome back to Our Life in Holland. We are so glad that you are here. I hope you guys are all having a wonderful week. We had an amazing weekend. It is so fun to have my parents here. Yesterday was Sunday. As you know, we went live with you guys, shared some of our Christmas wish lists. And if you haven't seen it, we had a very special guest who you probably haven't seen very much on YouTube lately. Uncle Sean made an appearance. He stopped by the house, joined our live. It was so fun. So go check that out if you haven't already. We had an awesome Sunday. We got to have breakfast with Papa and Grandma, church with Papa and Grandma. We had some friends from California come by and say hello. It was a great day. And this week, the kids only have one full day and one half day of school before Thanksgiving break. They are so excited. We are also excited. I'm back to the school where Ava and Ashton and Landon go, made an announcement last week that they are going to be doing online school just for one week after Thanksgiving. So it's going to be very similar to what we were doing in March where the kids all have their Chromebooks and they have everything online for one week. I think it's great. The idea is that it helps stop the spread of sickness and COVID by keeping everybody home for one week after the holiday. So they'll go back after that week for a couple more weeks until Christmas break. So short week for the kids this week. Tomorrow is a pajama day at school, which is really fun. The jammy shuffle, the jammy shuffle. Everyone put on your jammies. So we're getting everything ready for Thanksgiving today, getting everything from the store, hoping that things aren't sold out. If you wait to last minute, you can't find any of the herbs that you need or anything that you need to make the pie that you're making. So that's on the agenda for today. Ava's so excited because she has been begging me to have straight hair because when your hair's straight, it looks longer. And she has a lot of natural curl to her hair. So it's either really curly because we scrunch it or it's kind of wavy. And today I use this cool new tool that dries it straight. Her hair is straight for probably the second time in her life. <gasps> Look how pretty it is straight. And she's got her 32 degrees on because why? Why are you wearing those? It's like um, Woo woo! We are so excited because we are going together as a family tonight to something called Luminaria. It's one of our favorite Christmas traditions. And we actually have done it a couple times with my parents where you walk an entire mile and see an in-person light show. A lot of light shows are drive-throughs. You see them in your car. This one is in-person. There are scents. There are tons of different themes that you walk through. It is such an experience and it's one of my favorite things, but we're dressing really warm because it's pretty cold outside. So the kids wear these under their clothes to stay warm. We're gonna bring hats, gloves, probably get some hot chocolate along the way, but it's going to be so much fun. So come along with us. All right, you guys, we have made it out to beautiful Luminaria here at Thanksgiving Point. Guys, this place is magic. It is magical. Lumos Maxima. If you did not see us visit here last year, it is unreal. This is how we really kick off Christmas here at our household. This place has got, how many lights, Lindsay, do we know? I feel like Buddy the Elf, I'm just so excited. <laughs> So guys, this is how we kick off Christmas. We got Papa and Grandma Adams here. We got McKay and Stephanie here. Obviously, because of COVID, things are a little bit different, so we gotta throw on our masks. But because we're outside, you know, social distancing is pretty easy to observe. But guys, you are gonna see one of those magical light shows, one of the most magical Christmas lighting events that we personally have ever been a part of. Right, guys so there are over 1 million lights here at Luminaria Whoa. 1 million lights which is absolutely incredible I'm telling you these guys know how to kick off Christmas they have these really cool gingerbread houses which are all literally handmade Let's see if they got them in here today oh guys I could be wrong <gasps> they do they've got them okay guys check out these gingerbread houses these things are incredible all handmade
So, something pretty unique about this place, Lindsay was just saying to her, to her parents, is it kind of reminds us of, was it California, Sword Over California? Yes, the best ride at Disneyland. So, they actually pipe in smells to each kind of like little display here at Luminaria. So, like you'll smell pine or you'll smell peppermint or, anyway, so they pipe in smells and it actually comes through the trees. So, as you walk through, you just smell Christmas. Not only are you seeing Christmas, but you now smell Christmas. Mm. Smell, mm, smell it. <laughs> oh, how magical. This is beautiful. Mm. Feels like we're floating on ice. All right guys, so one of the coolest parts of Luminaria is this sparkling stream. So they actually do have a stream. So during the summertime, this is actually the Tulip Festival as well. So they have an actual stream that comes through the entire property here. And they take these lights and they place them above the stream and they illuminate the stream as if the stream itself is a flowing river of lights. It's absolutely amazing, check this out. Ava, this is our song. I am low, lots of mistletoe. This section of our tour reminds us of what, Ava? What does this song remind you of? Santa. No, besides Santa. Um, this reminds us of Home Alone. I made my family disappear. Honestly, it's probably just the song that does it to me, which is one of our very favorite Christmas movies, Home Alone. Ava, would you agree it's one of our favorites? Um, not my favorite. What's your favorite? Um, Santa Claus. Santa Claus? How'd you do that? Tinsel. Not just for decoration. Guys, comment down below what your favorite Christmas movie is. We love Home Alone and we love Santa Claus. So guys, this next section actually is pretty special. So obviously Christmas for us is very Christ-centered. And so this next section is called Light of the World Garden, which is really a, a Christ-centered garden with a bunch of really beautiful statues. So religion aside, this is a work of art that truly can be admired in a very beautiful kind of peaceful area that they've created. So let me show this to you.
Okay guys, this just in. Dancer and Cupid are here today. We were not expecting this today. They took a break from the North Pole, came all the way down here just to grace us with their presence here at Luminaria. Dancer and Cupid are in the house, everybody. So you guys just saw it, they just took a break. So the trainer here just let us know that they came down just for a season here to hang out, say hello to the kids, kind of get a little bit of an inside scoop on the uh, naughty or nice list, go back report to Santa. So kids, be on your best behavior here because Dancer and Cupid are on the lookout. Oh. Ho, oh, ho, oh, Lando! Alright guys, we just got home from Luminaria. What a spectacular event. Seriously, it is like the most beautiful like color Christmas light show you'll ever experience. It's amazing. It's Incred a million lights. Incredible experience. So fun to share that with my parents. We had the funniest experience tonight that I have to tell you about. Actually, it wasn't funny for a minute. My sister and my dad. I was funny all the time. <laughs> oh my gosh. My dad, my sister, and I were all very panicked for a minute. They have real live reindeer there, which is really, really cool. So we're all there by the reindeer and we're walking away from it. And all of a sudden we realize my mom's missing. And if you know my mom, she's not the type to get distracted or get chatting with someone or run ahead of everybody. It's just very unlike her. So we thought, oh, she must have gone to the bathroom. So my sister goes and checks in the bathroom. She's not in there and we're just thinking oh she must have gone to anyway we came up with all these different ideas we were missing her for the longest time we finally get worried enough that we decide to divide so my sister goes towards the front and i go backwards and we're going both directions and we're really kind of panicked for some reason we felt we were worried that she had fallen like lost her footing there's kind of a waterfall area where there's some ditches so <laughs> We all had imagined that my mom had fallen and like couldn't get up, was hurt, and we were so <laughs> panicked and worried. This guy was not the entire time. But we were so worried. We lost grandma. We did, actually. We lost we grandma. We legitimately lost grandma. Oh, important detail here. We called her phone multiple times. No answer. We were legitimately scared. Finally, Turin gets a hold of grandma, and grandma's like, oh, I was just freezing, and I thought we were close to the end, so I just hurried really fast to go to get to the end so I could go to use the bathroom. And we're like, what? So I call my sister and I say, we found her. She was in the bathroom. I cannot believe you told us she wasn't in there. And she's like, oh my goodness, was she in the boys? So she runs all the way back to the reindeer bathroom. And then we find out that she'd walked all the way to the front and was in that bathroom. It was like a total comedy of errors that we just kept <laughs> getting confused about where she was. So tonight we lost grandma. But she has been found. <laughs> She's and she okay. is snuggled safely in bed. And she got in a lot of trouble from all of us. We were so dang worried about her for not telling anybody where she had gone. I will say though tonight that my favorite part was probably that section where the artist had made all those statues of Jesus. It actually caused us to reflect really a lot on the things that we are grateful for as a family. And because this video is gonna come out on Thanksgiving, we thought we would just kind of express our gratitude that we have for you guys and also for our beautiful family and even for our struggles and for our trials we're grateful for those because they do make us stronger and so you know every holiday season we try to do some sort of acts of kindness and charity to others the small and simple things so for the last nine years Lindsay has been doing this service project every single holiday season where she takes these hope bags they're called and gives them to women on bed rest at four different hospitals throughout the county hundreds of bags you know we try to teach our kids to do little acts of kindness for friends and for family and for perfect strangers and and so this season, you know, we have taught them the importance of just being grateful for everything. And so, you know, we're a religious family. 
are a family that believes in prayer and whatnot. And so we had, you know, challenged them for this whole entire Thanksgiving season when they pray to only pray for things they are grateful for. So not ask anything, you know, don't ask for anything. Just say what you are grateful for and make that your entire prayer. Just list them. And it's been a little bit of a challenge because I think sometimes you get in the habit of asking for things. And so that has been something that has really been special for our, our family this uh, Thanksgiving season. I am truly a believer that when life feels really hard and you feel really down or you're feeling really discouraged, that gratitude can heal your heart. And if you start a gratitude journal and you find something, even in your hardest day, something to be grateful for, that you will start to feel surprised and overwhelmed by the blessings that you have in your life. Justin mentioned, you know, the opportunity that we have to show our gratitude by doing service this time of year. And I think that service can look different for everybody. There's so many different needs and so many ways to serve other people. We've been the recipients of service. That's the whole reason why we do the whole bag is because I received one. And we've been the recipient of service so many times. We've also had the opportunity to serve and I think service can look so different for everybody I think sometimes you think well I don't have a large amount of money to give but sometimes just saying hi to the person in front of you at the grocery store and asking how they're doing you never know who's lonely you never know who's having a bad day and who just needs your smile paying for the groceries of the person behind you well and I think about this guy is one of my greatest examples of service but he kind of did some out of the box things this month with paying for the people in the drive through oh. <laughs> But then also we've been kind of selling some old furniture off of, of KSL and every time that someone shows up to buy the furniture, he yeah. just says Merry Christmas and thank you for your payment, but we're gonna just give this to you for free. It's just kind of cool, you know, to just pass the on things. the Christmas spirit. It's just the little things. And it really shouldn't be done just in the holiday season. Generally, that's the time we all think, we think to do it. it and think, but that being said, you know, it's never too late to give service never. for sure. I always think of my dad. He has spent many years going once a week to feed the homeless. And he would go every single week, he'd make a giant thing of mashed potatoes. So there's so many ways that you can give, so many ways that you can show love. And we're just really grateful, so grateful, especially this time of year for all that we've been blessed for. And I, I truly believe that gratitude has healed my heart in difficult times, so. If everyone just takes a moment and just thinks about the good in their life, we all have some good in our life that we can be grateful for. So we wanna leave that message with you guys and express our gratitude and we will see you guys tomorrow happy thanksgiving see you guys